Hey everybody, Tracy Jo Callen here with Callen's Crafting Studio. Happy holidays. Uh, it's in between Christmas and New Year and I wanted to get a video posted. I know that so many of you have gotten new machines and I, like you, uh, a couple years ago heavily relied on YouTube to kind of help me get through the very overwhelming experience as to what do I do with my Cricut when I first get it. So I just thought I would put together a, a, a video just to kind of give some definitions of the different materials that you may come across or use. Um, many people use different names for the things so I just thought it might be helpful to show you some of the stuff. I have a uh, problem where I buy and buy and buy tons of materials because I have to have it and I never use them. I did get the Maker for Christmas, so I'm kind of excited. I had a Cricut Explore Air. Um, I didn't have the Air 2. I had the first one. So I have my nice, shiny new um, Maker. So I ran to Joann's and picked up some supplies yesterday, some of the fabric supplies. I guess I'm going to have to get out my sewing machine and attempt a couple uh, projects. Um, I did see um, a, a lovely tutorial by Lori Nunemaker. Um, about making a little bag for the Cricut Bright Pad. I don't have the Cricut Bright Pad. I'm going to show you the brand that I have, which works just as well, and it's only 25 bucks on Amazon, and I'll put that link below. Um, but I just wanted to go through and just give you guys some tips and tricks to understanding all of this overwhelming um, stuff, I guess. Uh, and so I'm going to show you some of the differences in the materials, some of the things that I know to look for, and I'm going to show you some of the tools that I use, and um, I guess we can just start there. So I've just pulled out a bunch of stuff in my supplies, and one thing that you'll notice is when you get the Cricut brand materials, um, they all have a colored band on the top. That should be your key to kind of help you determine what it is that you're looking for. So for example, any of the faux leathers have this uh, red band at the top, and they come in various different colors. They also come in... Um, uh, flat packs as well and they say faux leather on them but the biggest thing that I think people get confused is the difference between vinyl and iron-on so anything with iron-on is going to have a purple band so this is um, this is iron-on this is just their plain iron-on um, in silver I think on their website it's called iron-on light but it's generally just the solid colors um, that you'll find in whites and blues and all and it just is sort of a, a flat kind of color but you always want to look for the purple bands but then you'll see like this is the iron-on glitter this also has a purple band but this is the glitter material there's also iron-on foil so this is the foil again purple band so that um, really helps to make the difference iron-on materials are also known as HTV which stands for heat transfer vinyl so it's a heat transfer type of vinyl versus a regular vinyl um, the, and a regular vinyl any of the regular vinyl materials have a blue band on them for Cricut um, so this is glitter vinyl and you have to be careful not to get confused the regular vinyl with the iron-on vinyl or the HTV um, so um, the vinyl also comes in flat colors uh, let's see I think I have this is a sample pack of the vinyl so it has various different colors in it that's always a great way to get started is to pick up the sample packs I also love the Cricut mystery boxes when you're starting out new the mystery boxes are incredibly helpful just to kind of get you a bunch of different supplies at once and they are um, at a substantial discount I'm sort of now at the point where I've gotten so many of them. The ones that have come out lately I have a lot of the stuff in it already and I don't really need it so I haven't gotten any. But you can always see the reveals here on YouTube. There's plenty of YouTubers out there. Um, just look up Cricut Mystery Box Reveal each month because Cricut won't tell you on their website and um, the reveals are awesome. I know sometimes they don't always guarantee what's in um, every single box that they run out of stuff and, and they sell out. but. I highly, highly recommend getting those, um, and they do them digitally for um, uh, images that you might want to just download right into Design Space, or um, they um, offer 
physical boxes that they'll mail you with a host of supplies in them and sometimes they'll be like an iron-on box or a vinyl box or sometimes it's a cuddle bug box if for those out there that use a cuddle bug which is the Cricut version of an embossing folder that you run through um, paper you can use cutting dies in it or or what they call an embossing folder and I can pull some of those out and show you guys those too which actually makes impressions into the paper that the machine itself um, won't do for you um, so there's, they have a host of other things. There's so many things that you can buy for your machine. Um, also, one thing to mention with vinyl, you'll hear things such as 651 and 631. 651 is a permanent vinyl um, that when you put on things, you can run it through the dishwasher or use it on materials outside. And 651, um, I'm not sure the Cricut makes a 651, but again, there's a million other brands out there that do that. So you'll hear people talk about 651 and 631. 631 is generally the Cricut vinyl that I've purchased, and that is you can peel it off and you can reuse it. And vinyl can be used on many different things, plastic, glass. Um, uh, a lot of people do it on, on glass cutting boards. People decorate their Cricut machines um, with the vinyl. Actually, I'm, I had just peeled all of the stuff that I had on my old machine off because uh, I'm going to sell it. And um, I'm trying to think what else. So um, yeah, it can be used on a lot of people put it on cell phones I know I do it on the Contigo mugs if you like well, I gave somebody a coffee mug for Christmas and I put a little logo on the front of it so the vinyl can be used for a lot of different stuff but the main difference is you want to make sure you understand the difference between the permanent vinyl and um, the removable vinyl I think on walls most people you that's not a thing you can put it on walls um, to decorate rooms um, you want to use the kind that will peel off. You don't want to use anything that's going to be too permanent that would peel off the paint. So that's kind of the difference between the vinyls. Now, the iron-on materials, um, I love Cricut Glitter Iron-on. I will just tell you, I've made a zillion shirts. I'm a huge music buff. As you can probably see, I have music stuff all around my craft room in addition to craft stuff. Um, and every concert I go to, I make a shirt. I love it. I get logos online and I make tons of shirts. And um, I love using the vinyl, uh, or excuse me, the um, glitter. I also do like the foil. The foil I recently started using and I have another video that I showed how to apply them. Um, it was a Thanksgiving video and I can put the link down um, below on that video if you're interested in seeing that but it showed me really using all three different kinds of iron-on. Iron-on is actually really easy to use. I have a heat press. A lot of people use um, an iron. You just can use a plain old iron. You just have to make sure you follow the instructions clearly on the Cricut packaging um, or any of the packaging for any of the brands that you get. There's many more and they all work pretty well. A lot of people really like the um, Sizer, I think it's pronounced, Sizer brand. And Sizer has both, I believe, iron-on and regular vinyl, maybe just iron-on. I'm not sure. I have bought it before. But you just hear all these terms and you just get so overwhelmed. So um, another thing for ironing on that I highly recommend is I have these little um, sheets that I got on Amazon. I get in. I put the link. I can put the link below. Um, they're Teflon. They're amazing and they're super cheap. They'll last you forever and you always, anytime you're ironing on, you wanna make sure you protect your materials. Now, as much as I love iron on and working with vinyl, I don't work with vinyl too much, but I have done some fun things with vinyl. Um, I have stuck it to wood before. Doesn't always work that great. Um, when you use vinyl, you need the transfer tape and I didn't grab that, so let me grab it for you now. I'll be right back. Okay, so Cricut has its own transfer tape. It has a regular one and then it has a heavy duty one. The heavy duty one people uh, tend to use for the vi vi uh, glitter vinyl. And um, I understand you need the heavy duty one for this because sometimes people have trouble transferring that. But dollar store for a dollar, you can get clear, um, shelf liner paper works fabulous i get it in my dollar tree and um it's longer you can see usually that there it's a little bit so you get a lot more and um this one works great and if you get it in a mystery box you want to buy it or you catch it on sale it works really well but 
another little trick is getting it from the dollar store. Um, so another product that I do like to use a lot is this acetate and Cricut came out with some this year that has um, foil sort of designs in it. You can kind of see it's got this one has stars. I got a bunch of packs of these in mystery boxes. I use this for when I make little gift boxes and I want a clear top on the top of it. I'll cut a piece of this out. You have to make sure you use your special settings for it. Um, there was a whole bunch of them. Um, they came in real pretty. So I th again, I got these in a mystery pack and there's a whole bunch of different little designs in there. So they're really, really pretty. But I also use them when I make um, shaker cards and you can use in the front. If you don't want to use this and it's too expensive and you have access to um, the old school transparency film, works great. You can use the same thing. I've gotten some at my staple store. It is sometimes pricey. Um, so you can just get a few sheets and it usually goes a long way and I just make sure I keep all of my scraps but transparency film or sometimes Michael's or any of the craft stores um, actually sell even down the paper aisle where you get all your single paper um, sheets of it, sheets of it just plain acetate. So um, vellum is another thing that you can use. This is the vellum. It's kind of like a clear sort of not clear it's like semi-opaque sort of light paper a lot of people use this in invitations i've made um and i have a video an older video that i made of um candles uh, i can't think of what i called them but they're little illuminaries they're little illuminaries and the yellow in this works fabulous so there's a host of ideas that you can use for the vellum so i like the vellum a lot and then they have a lot of washi i I have to be honest I don't use it I have tons of it and I've, I because I had to get on the bandwagon when I first bought it um, and I bought a bunch of the washi tape and I really don't use it so it's there um, there's also glitter tape and I, I just got a bunch of that because I got it on sale so this is a Christmas card I got this card file from I believe Terry Brown I think it wasn't my design but turned out so cute I love this little card um, so thank you for sharing that file but the glitter tape on here was an awesome use so I'm gonna start making a lot of cards using that and I have it in a host of various different colors um, I'm a card maker I make tons and tons of cards uh, you can probably see behind me I have a spinner I'm gonna do my first craft show um, so I have tons of cards one thing that I started doing, especially for because of craft shows, um, I found these little uh, clear packages and I found them on Amazon and they're great for storing your cards, keeping the dust and keeping them protected. You can put them in a file folder. I put the envelopes inside if I'm able to. Um, so these are very helpful if you if, if you like to make cards. I, I, I find paper crafting my favorite thing to do, even though I've done just about everything. Um, the, the only thing I haven't done is, um, like glass etching and things like that. I haven't had much luck with the stencil paper. There is a stencil paper. I don't, it's a stencil vinyl that I don't have a sample of here because I used it all because I ruined it because I was trying to paint on wood and I couldn't get it to stick to the wood. And I think I was supposed to shellac the wood first, um, or put a coating of some sort so the paper would stick to it. It was a disaster. So epic fail um, but I really do like paper crafting so when it comes to paper oh my gosh you can go to any of the craft stores and it's overwhelming in the paper aisle they have tons of those paper pads and I am a sucker for them I have an entire stack of, of um, all kinds of different paper when you're starting out my suggestion would be to get um, some of the solid color packs um, you want different varieties of weights. You want some of the heavier cardstock if you're going to make things like boxes. Um, if you're going to make cards, just a medium weight. So like, you know, an 80 pound weight to 100 pound weight is a heavier weight of a cardstock. You get into 60, 65 pound weight cardstock, it's a little flimsier. Um, and then the, then you have a lot of the paper pads. Let me see here. Um, I'll just pull out one of these. The paper pads. These are paper, these are thin, and you wanna make sure that you put your machine on um, paper when you're using this. But this is, the paper is fabulous. There's a, millions of different really beautiful prints out there. My 
suggestion is just start with a couple. I have so many of them, I can't imagine I'm ever gonna use all of this. I tend to use the solid color papers and always accent with, um, with the patterned paper. So you can definitely get away with just having a few pads to start. Um, but I have so many I can't even tell you. So tools, I wanted to talk a little bit about tools too. There's a lot of different tools when you first get your die cutting machines. And um, so you have to have a score. Um, I don't believe the machines come with it. So that was a separate accessory that you buy. But if you wanna score any kind of paper, um, you definitely need this tool. So that I would say is a definite must. Um, another must is um, some type of, actually, get up here, okay scraper for your um mats the mats the various different mats that you use that you place your paper on that you're going to put into the machine to cut it um i have the large one and i have the small one there's a bunch of different kits out there i'm not sure if you can buy them separately but you definitely want to have some kind of scraper the spatula is helpful also especially when you're um mat is very 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 sticky in the beginning to gently get your paper and things off of it um, one of the suggestions that is made when the mats are new and they're super sticky is to take a t-shirt or some type of cloth and sort of pat it on the top of it because it will help um, get some of the stickiness off when you're using your mats um, you want to I tend to use the green mats. This is one, this is the blue, this is the light grip mat. This one just came. No, actually this is an older one that I had, but it, my, my new machine came with one. My maker came with one, but um, the, they get very, very sticky in the beginning. So sometimes when you go to take your paper off, paper off the paper can curl. And what I suggest doing is putting it down and then peeling the mat away from the paper versus peeling your paper up like this off off the top if you were to pull this off the top um, so my suggestion is to do it the opposite way until your paper starts to release and your mat becomes a little bit less sticky some people like the blue mats I do use the purple mat the purple mat is a heavy grip mat it's great for the glitter vinyl it's great for the glitter iron-on and it's great for the faux leather or any kind of leather or thicker material that you're going to put on it um, the green mat is the one that I use, have used mostly, um, and it's pretty much a, a really nice all-purpose mat. One thing you can also do is flip your mats around. Don't always put your stuff in the same spot, um, because that you do lose the stickiness faster. So your mat can be completely reversed and put into the machine backwards, and that way you can use both ends. Um, so, and you can clean the mats by using just a little bit of like Dawn dish soap and a little scrubby, although the fabric mat, I understand that you should not do that with at all. Um, but you can clean some of the paper fuzzies and use them a few times. I like to get them on sale. A lot of times you can find really great sales and there's tons of discount codes out there that you can use to get them when they're on sale. Um, another great tool, and Cricut has their own. This is my, my light board. I do not have it plugged in right now, but it just has a little tap at the corner here. Um, that you can just tap for the lightness. These are fabulous for weeding, weeding vinyl, weeding iron-on. It puts light underneath of it and it makes your cut lines a lot easier to see. So that, 25 bucks, I got this one, works great. I'm gonna, like I said, make a little fabric case for it today. Um, hmm, not much of a seamstress, so we'll see how that goes. I do own a sewing machine, but we'll see. Um, so another, some other tools I, love these tweezers these are great for um, placing embellishments or tiny tiny pieces of paper um, when you're gluing things down um, love this one so there's a, and there's a whole bunch of weeding tools out there there's kits that have various different ones in them i will tell you that the one kit that i got that came with multiple pieces this is the one that i like the best it's kind of hard to see at the very end there is a tiny little um sort of hook I want to say I love this tool I find this the best to weed with so if you don't want a whole bunch of them and you can just find this one that's great unfortunately I think it only comes in a pack with a bunch of other ones it has tweezers in it various different sizes of tweezers um, I forget what all came in this particular pack but I don't I haven't found a great use for these tweezers yet 
Um, the quilling tool is great. You can get the Cricut brand. There's a million other of them out there on Amazon. Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. Before you buy Cricut products, if you are on a limited budget, I certainly suggest checking eBay or Amazon. Um, but this is a quilling tool where you put a little piece of paper into the end of it to roll paper. It's very useful for things like making paper flowers, small paper flowers. I use this all the time. And then, of course, the, the pens that load. I understand that there's other brands that will work in your machines. I've never used any. I just have every color that the, the Cricut makes. Um, again, I wait till everything goes on sale and I use somebody's um, uh, discount code that's out there. Um, there's tons of them. Um, people that are sponsored by Cricut and they get Cricut and they're like awesome. They're 15, I think it's 15% off and free shipping most of them. And Cricut Access, is it worth it? Is it, is it not worth it? That's another question people want to know. I think it's very worth it. I have it. I love it. Um, I pay for it annually. Um, I do the medium priced one that I think is $99 a year. And um, I don't get into buying all of the cartridges. I, I do own some and I have bought some of the licensed Anna Griffin ones. Um, but the access subscription I think is well worth the price. You have access to tons of fonts. Um, and you can, uh, there's just, there's a zillion pictures in it. It's fabulous. You can still, once you get more advanced and you learn how to understand how to upload pictures and convert them. Um, from the internet. I never pay for pictures. I can tell you that. I very rarely purchase anything um, outside of my subscription. If it's something else I want that the subscription doesn't have, I just find it on the internet. I use a program called Inkscape, which can be a little cumbersome, but there's videos out there to learn how to use it to convert your images into SVGs. Um, and I have done that very successfully with all kinds of logos and things like that. Um, so access subscription. I like it. I do recommend it if you can afford it. It just opens up the possibilities to so many more projects than when you first start because there's really not a lot included for free um, when you get your machine. i um, trying to think of what else I want to tell you guys. Um, that's kind of the tools. Oh, so all kinds of embellishments and things. It's so much fun when you're making your cards to... Um, it really embellished them with um, all kinds of pretty jewels and ribbon. I do have all all different kinds of inks and chalks that I use to kind of line. You know, I love I love to um, use these uh, metallic chalk sets that I have. Let me grab that for you. I have this one. It's a Pebbles. I got this on Amazon, and. Um, it's a per, this is pearlescent chalks. They have various different ones. I don't even know if they're still around. I don't think they're discontinued. I love this. I, it gives your um, paper so much dimension around the edges. So I use this. I also have inks um, that I use. And one thing I did when I first started was is I bought some personalized stamps. You can't really tell what this is. Um, let me find a card that I have stamped on the back here. I'll pull one out. So I stamp everything with my personalized stamp on the back. So you can see on the back here, it says Handmade by Tracy Jo Callen. And I got various different ones. Um, that's the one I like. Um, I have another one that looks like a little barcode. It's really cute, but you should always personalize your materials when you give them to somebody. I think that's really important. The stamps that I ordered were very inexpensive, but they took a long time to get because they, they all came from overseas. Um, I think in like, Thailand, I want to say, is where I, the ones came, but they're great quality and they're super cheap. They're like a couple dollars a piece. So if you can wait a month to get one, I definitely recommend going that route versus finding somebody locally that's going to probably be a lot more expensive. So I love stamping all of my all of my paper crafts. Um, and then I just got one of these little blocks that you can put them on. This one's a little kitty cat. It says. I think it says handmade by Tracy Joe, and then this one here is a little barcode with flowers that says created by Tracy Joe Cameron. So that's really great. As far as the inks, for starters, these are great, these color box inks, because they come out like this, and you can kind of just ink the edge of your paper. You can just take it, it has a little handle on the bottom, and you can sort of just like um 
I don't really have a sample piece of paper here, but when you want to ink the edges of the paper, you can kind of just go like that. Especially on flowers, it's super, super pretty and it just gives you a little bit of hue on the edge. If you want it further in, you can just kind of do it as middle little as much as you want. They're super quick drying. So I like these little color palettes, but you want to make sure you get the ones that pull out. There's some that don't pull out and they're really kind of not useful to me. So that's a great little thing. I have different stamps. Sometimes I'm just too lazy to write or the machine's taking a little longer than I like. So I do have a few stamps that I'll use just to stamp the inside of my cards. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. You, there's so much stuff out there you can buy and you just got to start small and figure out what it is you like to use your Cricut for. Some people just like using it for iron on and vinyl and making clothes and shirts and, and gifts like that. Again, I like it a lot for paper crafting. Um, I have tons and tons of, I have a whole cabinet full of all these little things. I find them when they're on sale. They're like a dollar a pack at the stores in all different colors. But little stuff like this really, really dresses up your paper crafts. Plain and simple. It just gives it that little bit of bling that just makes them so special and so personalized. And sometimes you make things and you're like, wow, this is really beautiful. And it wasn't that hard. So those are just kind of some little tips and tricks I thought I would just share with everybody. If there's something specific anybody wants to know about, please let me know and just leave it in the comments below. Um, I think that's probably it for now. If I think of something else, I will do another one. So everybody have a very happy new year. Thank you for subscribing to my page and watching my videos. And I'm still learning too, so I have a lot to learn with my new Cricut uh, maker. So that ought to be fun as I learn to sew and uh we'll learn together so happy holidays everybody take care